I'm Blaine Carter, and together we're going to be exploring the what, why, and how of open source technologies. If you've gone to an Oracle event recently, such as Oracle Open World or Oracle Code 1, you may have picked up an Oracle Code card that kind of looks like this. And then when you got home and you pushed one of the buttons on the bottom here, here, uh, you got a screen that says no internet. Uh, don't worry, it's not broken. Uh, you just need to get it connected to your internet. And for that, we'll need to open a serial connection to the card. And the easiest way to do that is to use the Arduino IDE. So download and install the Arduino IDE. It should look something like this. Then you will want to connect your code card to your computer with a USB cable and go to tools. Down here you go to port and then you will select the port that you're connected to. Let me get mine connected up there. Let me just start that over. Tools, port, there we are. And select the card you're connected to. And that will hook you up to your card. And then go back up to tools and click on serial monitor. Once your serial monitor opens, go down here and select the baud rate. It's the 115200 baud rate. And then take your code card. You might have turned off and on again, but then just press and release the A and B button real quick like that. And you'll see a bunch of text pop up on the screen. You'll get this little weird line and then it will go through and do a few things. And then it will try and connect to your uh, Wi-Fi server and it's going to actually try to connect to the default one that we were using at the uh, booth at Open World or wherever you happen to get your card from and it, of course it won't be able to find that one so wait till this is done and it says it cannot connect and then it's fairly simple you put in SSID equals your let me get the right one there SSID equals your SSID uh, for your Wi-Fi network. And remember, this is the 2.4, not the 5.0. Uh, so enter that there, hit enter, and it should come down here and say value saved for SSID. And then you'll want to type in password and the password for your Wi-Fi. So type that in there, hit that also, and it will say value saved for password and it should show your Wi-Fi SSID and password. Now there's one other step we need to do since the code card is going through the internet and connecting to an Apex instance that we have set up. Uh, every once in a while they cycle the uh, security certificates so we'll need to get the fingerprint for the security certificate. So the uh, back end for the code card is being served up through an Apex app that you can find at apex.oracle.com, a whole bunch of other parts of the URL, but the part that's uh, important to us right now is just that. So if you open your browser and go to apex.oracle.com and then click on the little lock icon, this is Firefox. If you're in Chrome, I believe it says secure and it has a lock there. We want to look at the connection information and then we want to view more information and when this comes up you should see a thing called view certificate. It should be a similar, pro a similar process in Chrome. Uh, what you're looking for is the view certificate option. Once you find that it should look like this and what we're looking for is the SHA-1 fingerprint right there. So we'll highlight that and copy that and then save this off and we will go back to the serial console and set the security part. All right, now that we're back over in the secure, uh, serial monitor, uh, we wanna make sure that we're still in the mode on the code card where we can write stuff to it. So a simple command to try is just type in ls. Uh, if nothing happens, like is in the case with me there, uh, turn the card on and off again and just quick press A and B at the same time. It will cycle through all of that uh, same stuff as it did before, only hopefully this time, if you've set up your uh, Wi-Fi credentials correctly, it will say connecting and then it will show that it's connected and it gave me an IP address. And so now we need to set the fingerprints 
for fingerprint A2 or uh, A1, A2, B1, and B2. So we're going to take that SHA-1 fingerprint that we got from the security certificate in the, in the web browser, and we're simply going to put fingerprint A1 equals and then that fingerprint. Now notice that I took out the colons and replaced them with spaces. This is what the code card is going to expect, so if you haven't done that, do that. And then it's just as simple as fingerprint A1 equals and then we'll put in, and of course I typed all this into a text editor ahead of time, so I can just copy and paste uh, fingerprint B1, fingerprint A2, and fingerprint, let's get that one, fingerprint B2. And that should set up all of the fingerprints for that. And so once those are set, you can turn the code, the card on and off again one more time, and it should say shutting down, should look something like that. And then just press uh, the A button, for example, or any, any of the buttons, just uh, push one, let it go. You can see here that it connected to your Wi-Fi network again, gave you an IP address. Then here it connected to the, there's the full URL for the Apex app. Uh, showing the fingerprint and then the way that you'll know that it works is the response will come back with some sort of a template. Uh, in my case, I'm working with a card that somebody told me was broken, so I changed it to say not broken. So this is what I expected to show up on my card. And then uh, if I take the card here, look down in the corner, you should see that it has my little not broken on it. So my card is now up and running and I'm connected to my Wi-Fi. Uh, every once in a while, if the uh, security certificate gets cycled on apex.oracle.com, uh, you will see, like you'll hit the A button, for example, and it will uh, just hang, and it won't, nothing will come back. If you connect this back up, you'll see that it'll, it may say a security warning or something, and I don't remember the exact message uh, in the serial monitor. Uh, simply go back and repeat the fingerprint step and set the four fingerprints and it will be back up and running. But as it is now, you can go ahead and play with your code card again. I hope you found this informative. If you would rather not have to type all of this stuff in from a video, I do have a blog post that has a couple other options uh, in there for you that you can check out and I will link that in the description below the video uh, so that you can go over there and just copy and paste stuff from over there without having to do a lot of typing. But uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy your code card and have fun and thank you for spending your time with me.